Hi, and welcome to Tech for PD. I'm Jim Brown. And I'm Chad Jackson. I'm not the one overcompensating with a large mug. And today we're going to be talking about embedded systems in PLM. Embedded systems, or maybe even more properly, we'll just call them product-oriented uh, systems and software, um, are becoming more and more important in the engineering community and product development because we're seeing more and more of the, the capabilities and innovation of products really coming from the software as opposed to the mechanics and the electronics. Still important to get the mechanics and the electronics right, but a lot of what's really happening that's new and interesting yeah. is happening in the software side. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely right. A lot of innovation has come from that side of things. Yeah. Now, if you look at how um, those artifacts and items are managed in the development cycle or the design right. cycle, um, traditionally, software has been managed with Software Configuration Management Tools, or SCM. And traditionally, that's come from software application developers, mm -hmm. not, not design and manufacturers of mechatronic products. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we've seen a lot of um, uh, in, integrated development environments that are used to develop code. They come from, um, they come from IBM with the rational suite of products. Yep. They come right. from... Microsoft and, and a host of others, but there's also a lot of open source tools that are out there, mm -hmm. um, and companies have pulled together a lot of different things to help develop their software. Yeah, absolutely. So, so there's a lot of ones that are kind of coming out of out of the software space, but all from the also from the PLM space. There's been a lot of movement too. So you look at someone like a PTC that has done the MKS acquisition, mm -hmm. which has all been a, been all about software development yeah, absolutely. for mechatronic products. You can also look at Siemens PLM with Team Center. They've kind of managed compiled software deliverables for a long time right. and also have managed requirements kind of all in one place. Um, and then you look at Dassault. They have a lot of capabilities in this space as well, except, you know, something they do a little differently is to manage requirements in a federated fashion, meaning that you can keep those in Excel spreadsheets or in other systems, uh, and it will kind of connect and be a master view across multiple lists. Right. And it's interesting when you take a look at that broader view, when you start with requirements, move down the V model and up through validation and verification, um, requirements in and of itself, there's a lot of requirements that are managed in spreadsheets, as you said, yeah. or in, uh, in doors and, and lots of other solutions. So there's a lot of different systems being used. Yep. All right. It's time to debate. Sounds good. Touche. So the question we're going to debate today is for product-oriented software development or embedded software, yeah. um, does that need to be in PLM or is there going to be another approach, at least in the near term? Yeah. So, so my position is that it needs to be part of, needs to be managed in PLM. And for me, it's, um, it's part of having a complete product definition in a single place. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually not just talking about compiled software. I mean, actually... A lot of PLM providers do that today. You can compile the software and put it as right. part of the bill of material. But I think you need to go deeper than that. You need to have the libraries, you need to have the raw software code, um, and all of that in one single place in PLM. Yeah. And, and I think, obviously, differently. I think that yeah. the tools that are available for developing software today are very specialized. There's, there's a lot of differences in developing software than there, there are in developing mechanical and electrical components. And that um, some of the things like, just take the change management cycle. Yep. Software iterates much more quickly, so the life cycle is different, even though it needs to be in a, a broader change, um, you know, change paradigm with the mechanics and the electronics, mm -hmm. it, it, it turns much more quickly. There's mu much more of an iterative process in most cases. Yeah. Um, there, there are other differences as well in terms of the way that software is developed. So I, I, just think that, I just think that the tools that are out there right now already work. There's a lot of investment in them. So we're going to see a federated environment. We're going to mm. see um, different paths for the different disciplines for mechanical and electrical, and those have merged a bit over time. Yeah, I agree um, but that. software yeah. is going to be further outside for a lot longer okay. at this point. All right. Well, so he here's the reason why I think it's important to have them in in one single place. If you look at well the V model that you referenced before, mm -hmm. so you define requirements and in system engineering you you allocate those. Right. Well, some requirements might be allocated not only to a mechanical part but also to some raw software code. Right. 
Um, also, you look at it from a platform and modularity perspective. There's a lot of reuse and the ability to uh, create a whole platform of products uh, using some pieces of raw software, but maybe not the same piece of compiled software. Right. And also, I think the change process after design release is also critical. That has to right. span the engineering disciplines. Okay. So I, I, I just think there's a whole lot of reasons to have them have a single product definition and manage it in one place. Well, if I look into my much larger <laughs> cup of knowledge that runneth over, <laughs> um, then I agree with you on that. But what I also think is that when you start to look at um, exactly those differences in software, software you've got um, divergent and convergent lines of software that depending on different variants, you want to reuse part, but then you're going to have a variant, and you need to be able to iterate through those mm -hmm. and validate and verify them. And, and PLM is just not made to do that right mm. now. So when you're really looking at that process of driving through the actual development of the software, mm -hmm. those tools that can handle those unique requirements, what I think we're going to see is maybe some federated requirements or even combined requirements and then each of the disciplines, disciplines for mechanical, electrical, and software being in their own tools, managed in an overall program, mm -hmm. right? But at the same time, individual development tools for each. Mm, okay, all right, the, well. The, the, same, the same way you don't use a mechanical CAD tool to uh, design a board or to design yeah. a chip. Okay, all right, interesting. All right, so, uh, so good perspective, although wrong. Um, so let's uh, let's move on and talk about uh, the, <laughs> the uh, um, looking at the future in the crystal ball. So Chad, if we look into the great ceramic ball cup, all right, crystal ball, what do we see happening in the future of embedded software? Yeah, I don't think we can look, see through the ceramic. But uh, anyway, uh, what I think is going to happen is um, we're going to see a lot more integration between IDEs and PLM environments. Mm -hmm. So if you look at kind of the peer in the mechanical realm, which is mechanical CAD and PLM, it's very seamless today, very seamless integration. You can check stuff in and out without leaving CAD, and a lot of it's done automatically. I think a lot of those same paradigms can be moved over to how IDEs and PLM systems work together. Yeah, well, I, I totally agree, and I think that um, just like there are some uh, mechanical CAD and PLM combinations, mm -hmm you know, those from the same vendors, for example, that work more tightly together. Uh, we're going to see more tight partnerships, maybe even some merger and acquisition to bring more of that software, line, you know, software development into the core of PLM. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, we're also going to see some specialists pop out, like people like Big Lever that do things like product line engineering that really understand <clears throat> the nuances of why it's different developing uh, product-oriented software than things like enterprise software. Yeah. So, okay. Makes interesting sense. space to watch. Yeah, absolutely. It can't be ignored anymore. All right. So that ends our crystal ball session looking into the future, even though it may be opaque. And now we're going to take a look at the consequences from the last episode. Hey there, this is Chad, uh, and you're seeing my face because, yes, I lost the last debate as well. So it's uh, time to pay up, and it's going to evolve a lot of this. Oh, <laughs> Oh, Thanks for joining us today on Tech for PD. We'd like to thank our founding sponsor, PTC. Also, thanks to our uh, sponsor, Autodesk. See you next time.